President Trump getting high remarks on the economy. A new Fox poll says more than half of the country approves of the job that he's doing on the economy. And if the old age, uh, the old age adage rather rings true, it's the economy, stupid. Then this indeed bodes very well for President Trump being reelected. Joining me now to discuss Tiana Lowe from the Washington Examiner, Fox News contributor Jamu Green. Tiana, let me start with you. Um, you know, say what you will. It's hard to argue that this economy hasn't become a juggernaut. And it's hard to argue that once you get in the voting booth, that that might be the most important issue. Certainly. I mean, regardless of how you feel about President Trump's persona, we're in the longest bull market in history. We're managing to have half century low unemployment while maintaining super low inflation. And it shows people, even if they dislike Trump, they like Trump's America. Three years ago, seven in 10 Americans thought that this country was moving in the wrong direction. Now that's only five in 10. And if you look at this point in Obama's second term, half the country thought that Obama was moving the economy in the wrong direction. And only four in 10 Americans thought he was doing it in the right direction. For Trump, those numbers are reversed. Jamu? You got to wonder why his poll numbers are so bad against basically all 100 of the Democratic candidates. Um, but, Charles, here's the thing. Yes, this great economy should be something that Donald Trump just rides this wave into victory in 2020. But... As we know, as we have seen, as has been proven by his behavior, he's probably going to be his own worst enemy. But the argument about this economy actually is being made very well by Elizabeth Warren, who is putting out warnings in the same way that she did before the recession in 2008. And, and so I, I do think there's an argument to be made. I, I do hope that Democrats who are running for president continue to make that argument and, and sound those right. warning bells Let me ask you on that, because Jamu. that tax cut bill has really put us in a precarious position as we head well, what will well, most well, likely be into a recession. Well, yeah, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't listen. I don't, I watch the economy every second of every day, and I never try to play economist. I don't see where a recession is coming on, but. Let me ask you, do you worry about that as a Democrat when if, if all the Democrats jump on that bandwagon, it sounds like they're they're cheering on, that they're rooting, that they're hoping for a recession rather than being prudent. It seems to me it could backfire if, if we don't get a recession. It's interesting because Democrats were saying the exact same thing to conservatives and Republicans during the Obama years, that they were cheering on these great job numbers, that they were cheering on this, this turnaround. And I, I, I hope we can, we can get past that and, and get to a place of what are the best policies to make sure that a booming economy is not just benefiting Trump's billionaire friends, but also benefiting those nurses and teachers and, and, and middle class workers across the country. And we have not seen that because of this tax cut. And as we look at the impact of the tax cut not paying for itself, yeah, there, there are some really important warning bells that are going off, Charles, All right. that well, I know as you pay attention yeah, to yeah, this, Yeah, yeah, Well, I can you tell you right now, clearly. blue collar workers, not supervisory workers, their pay has outstripped that of their supervisors uh, over the last year dramatically. But I do want to say, Tiana, when you look at this same poll, uh, beyond the economy, uh, President Trump is below 50 percent in every category. And also, uh, it, the poll says that the best party to fix uh, immigration, trade, North Korea, Iran, health care, race relations, all are Democrats. So if these kind of things start to rear up, if these other topics become critical, how, how you know, more important, rather, with, with respect to, to the election, how does the president handle that? The issue is that Trump is, in fact, his worst enemy because some, he lacks discipline in his messaging from time to time. If you see the immigration uh, debacle that we're currently facing, rather than focusing on, all right, secure the border and then we figure out what to do with everyone already here, he does sometimes get wrapped up in this rhetoric that allows Democrats the privilege of using these very visceral images of kids in cages, which admittedly was still going on during the Obama administration, but it's effective messaging. So okay. he needs to focus back to the basics. How do you help out the bottom line American, which his policies are already doing, but the messaging needs to follow that. There's no doubt that uh, more that the bottom line, so-called bottom line Americans are doing extraordinarily well compared to where they've been for the, the not just the last administration, but for a long time.